All right, good morning. Fire away. Hello, Coach. Good morning. Federico Herrera from Damegola. Coach, uh, in Super Bowl 55, you, you guys had uh, many troubles with the uh, offensive line, and then you renew it completely, and now you are the third best uh, uh, offensive line in, in, with just uh, 26 uh, sacks allowed. On the other hand, uh, uh, the defense of the Eagles is the best in, in, with seven, 70, sack, 70 sacks in this season and the third best since 1960, at least. Do you think, Coach, this is going to be the main matchup in this game in the Super Bowl? Yeah, I'll tell you that um, when you get in the playoffs, uh, that, that combination right there, the O-lines versus the D-lines on both teams, ends up being kind of the um, thing that wins or loses games. So, uh, and it's magnified every level that you go up, every step of the that you move up um, in the playoffs. And so the Super Bowl, uh, it'll be magnified at the most uh, between, between those two. And uh, normally who wins that battle ends up winning the game. And, um, and so that's what you'll see. I'm sure that'll be the same way in this game as it is in most Super Bowls. Coach, it's a bit, bit of a piggyback off that question, but um, obviously protection issues were, were the issue in the last Super Bowl for, for you guys. Um, can you just talk about how the, your, your group, that front five, has evolved and specifically the impact that Creed has had on it in his two years? Yeah. Um, yeah, protection end ends up being the, the issue. You want to be able to have a mix of things in there that you can do. Uh, you get into those, uh, if you get behind and you have to throw the ball every down, uh, that's never good, um, and they, you know, again, they've got they've got that good defensive front, um, and then Creed Creed uh, has helped us uh, in the middle as our center, and he's a smart kid. He's big, he's athletic, and uh, and tough, and so he loves to play the game, and uh, that's been a that's been a real solid position for us. Andy, how you doing? Good morning. Good. Good to see you. Patrick Mahomes up for NFL MVP today and also the NFL Honors is tonight. Mm -hmm. um, for the second time, you know, he could win MVP. What's that mean to you to be in five years that he's played as a starter to be up for MVP in such a short time? Yeah, well, he, he um, I think he's deserving of it for sure. Um, he works extremely hard, as you know, uh, at his profession. He works hard to be the best. He tries to help our team be the best. Um, he says it every day when he comes into practice, uh, into the huddle, uh, let's be great today. And, and he, he lives that. And uh, my hat goes off to him for that. Very proud of him for it, the way he goes about his business. Good morning, Andy. There's a bit of a trendy uh, phrase right now, which is, why is Travis Kelsey always open? And it's kind of funny, but at the same time, there's, there's a lot of truth. So what's your answer to that? Why is Travis Kelsey always open? Yeah, listen, Travis has a good feel for the game. Um, and in particular for space, teams have doubled him and banged him around and, and man coverage, put DBs on him, corners and safeties, linebackers. Um, they've tried a lot of different things. So throughout his career now, he's seen about, about everything you can, you can put on him. Sometimes they, they work, sometimes they don't. So, uh, but... He, he has a great relationship with our quarterback. Those two are on the same page. They see the defenses the same way. Uh, they're best friends on the field and off the field. Uh, that, I guess, helps too. You, you want to be, if you're a receiver, you want to be friendly with the quarterback for sure. Um, and, and Travis, you know, Travis is, uh, he, he studies. He comes off like a, Nice, funny guy and happy-go-lucky, but he studies like crazy and he knows defenses, um, and he can and he can see and and react to them quickly uh, during a game. Hey, coach, uh, just the success you've had with uh, more time to prepare for games. Do you feel like uh, with all the craziness that comes with the Super Bowl, you feel like you guys are chopping at the bit to play, or do you feel like you need more time to get ready for this game? 
Yeah, I think the guys, they, they'll look forward to getting through today. Today's a little bit harder practice, and, um, and, and this is normally how it works during the season. They get through Thursday, and um, they're, you know, they really start focusing in and going, doggone, we're there. You know, it's, and you start getting really excited. But once they get through today, they'll, they'll, I'm sure that'll take place. Uh, it's been two weeks, man. They, they, they want to play, uh, you know. So we'll, we'll see how today goes. And <clears throat> Andy Ryan from the New York Post. All right, Ryan. With what happened to the 49ers in the NFC Championship game, losing both their QBs, that actually happened to the Giants during the regular season too, and officials being able to pull a quarterback as soon as he hits his head to get tested. Do coaches need to think about activating a third quarterback for games so something like that doesn't happen? Is that something you'll consider either in this game or moving forward? Yeah, I think uh, the league will probably address that at the end uh, of the season here. Um, right now, that's not where we're at. We, we've got our couple quarterbacks, and then we've got our, our backup plan. And hopefully we don't have to get to that backup plan. The, the chances are that you don't, but you never know. If you do, you do. Coach, good morning. Herbie. Herbie. You're right, my left this time. There you go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Kadarius Tony yesterday was limited in practice. Uh, this is our last day of media availability, but what's, what is your concern level for his availability for Sunday night? Yeah, so um, he did everything yesterday um, that was in the that was planned for him to do, um, and and so, but uh, um, he's got more today, and we'll see see how he does. Um, but he was. He was spirited yesterday and running around like crazy. So we'll see how it works out today. Coach right here. Uh, obviously, your rookies have played in a lot of big spots for you, none bigger than what's coming up on Sunday. How do you get them to kind of calm down, go through the emotions of playing in a Super Bowl? Is it a play call? Is it something you have to say? How do you get them to kind of focus in on it? Yeah, normally the first hit, uh, they, they calm down a little bit, whether it's an offensive player being hit uh, or vice versa. So. Um, but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they'll, their, their juices will be going. And, um, you know, it's important that they, they maintain their composure and give themselves an opportunity to play to their best. And, uh, but again, it's, it's a Super Bowl and you can coach guys up on it, but they, uh, having that experience, uh, is, is different, you yeah. Uh, good morning, Coach Reed. Yeah. Uh, you spoke briefly about Travis Kelsey's ability to constantly get open. Uh, the Eagles also have one of the premier tight ends in the league. What would you say the unique challenges are covering a tight end versus a wide receiver? Yeah, well, they're big and athletic. And so uh, you've got to have a defender that is big and athletic and can run like tight ends can run. And it's a, it's a unique challenge. Uh, and it will be for both teams, Yeah. Good morning, Coach Reed. Um, I'm curious as to uh, what your favorite song is by Rihanna. Oh, boy. <laughs> you, could, you need to ask uh, Patrick that one, since you set him up yesterday, or whoever set him up yesterday <laughs> with the question. Uh, Coach, with the roster and defense with as much turnover um, as this one, how valuable is the perspective of a coach like uh, defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo, and how have you seen him use his experience this week? Yeah, um, so Steve's very good. I've known him a long time, and uh, he was on that original staff that we had at Philadelphia, and I knew him before that at the college level. So um, I've got trust in him, a lot of trust in him. Uh, he's got a good scheme, tremendous scheme. Uh, and he has a big test coming up uh, on Sunday. So it's a great challenge. They've got a good offense. Um, you know, they'll make some plays, and I know our defense will make some plays. So it's, uh, you know, but that's, that's the, the challenge there. Coach, you've got such a good feel for your team. You always do. It's obviously a strength of yours. So can you share with us 
the feel you have for your guys right now. We're not going to be able to talk to you between now and the Super Bowl. So if you could just summarize your, the vibe right now. Yeah, they're, uh, um, they're obviously excited. They're excited to be here and uh, do this. You get, you get to today, and you've got uh, the hardest practice you know, the week. I'm not telling you it's two a days or any of that, anything like that, like training camp. But, um, but they have a, you know, they have a, a good practice ahead of them. They, I know they look forward to getting through that. Um, and then, um, I, I think they're they start picking things up. It's more now the game, and they can kind of see the end of the tunnel of practice. You know, all these practices that they, they've had leading up to this thing. Um, but uh, I love this team. I love the, the energy of the team. Um, they're fun to be around. Um, they they kind of know when to be crazy and when, uh, when to crank it down and uh, tune it in and be serious. Uh, and so they're, I think it's a good bunch, unique. Um, I, feel, I felt like during the season, every week, I was getting to know these new guys a little bit better. Uh, we had so many changes, and uh, I, I love the way everything gelled there, personality-wise. Coach, a number of your guys over the years have talked about how you coach them to get better and peak late in the year. You've been around a lot of Super Bowl teams, both as a coach and as a spectator since you've been in the league. How do you explain how some guys really step their game up, play their best on the biggest stage, and how it can be, you know, overwhelming for others? Yeah, um, that's the human element, and um, what makes it so interesting, and and uh, people are so curious to to watch. Uh, you, you don't know, uh, you don't know who that person will be. Um, but somebody will. In this game, there's somebody that uh, we haven't mentioned, uh, and just about everybody's been. There's somebody that hasn't been mentioned that's going to step up, and you're going to go, "Wow, um, that was a great job by that kid." Andrew Galato with WFUV Sports, Coach. Your offense, you know, last season with Tyreek Hill now this season without him really hasn't skipped a beat at all. What can you say about Patrick, Travis, and that group, you know, losing a star receiver and now really right back to the Super Bowl? Yeah. Well, I mean, it starts with Patrick, and uh, he didn't go anywhere. That was the, that was the plus. He, he's right here with us, and, and, and then Travis uh, is a big part of that. Uh, the thing I was most proud of them about was – we had all these new people come into the mix. Other than McCole Hardman, uh, most of the guys were new. And uh, the guys welcomed them in and then, uh, and then helped teach them. So not only uh, did Joe Blameyer uh, coach them or Tom Melvin coach the tight ends or Greg Lewis with the running back, but um, you know the players, the veteran players, the Travises and Mahomes and McColl, they they all helped out getting these guys uh, to where we are now and where they're comfortable playing with each other there. Yeah. Right there. Jack Pearson, Arizona PBS Cronkite News. Sorry, over here. Oh. Uh, Jack Pearson, Arizona PBS yep. Cronkite News. Both you and Philadelphia in your conference championship games were able to get to Burrow and Purdy really early in that game. How important is it to kind of punch first in this game with a more, more with a more mobile quarterback like Jalen Hurts. Yeah, sure. You wanted to get start. You want to get started fast, and that's uh, that's the objective in every game. And uh, but if something doesn't happen, the game is still four quarters, and you got to play uh, the whole game. And you know the the one thing that jumps out at you in Super Bowls is turnovers. You you got to limit the turnovers and. Um, it's great to start fast, but that also there are other factors in there that become important, and turnovers is probably one of the biggest ones. Dario Austin here with PlayerProfiler.com. So fourth downs have obviously played a big role in these playoffs. We know the Eagles are very willing to be aggressive on fourth downs. You guys scored a touchdown on a very important fourth down in the AFC Championship game. 
What do you make of that shift league-wide, and how do you approach that as, as a head coach? Yeah, um, we try to stay relatively aggressive on fourth downs, uh, and as do the Eagles. Um, uh, there, there's, a, there's a judgment that needs to be made uh, according to uh, field position time, you know, the time on the clock and, uh, and what quarter you're in and so on, what part of the game you're in. So, but, uh, and then what do you have on that sheet that looks good and, uh, to call? And, and so you take all those factors in and uh, you, you go for it. And, um, you know, and then, anyways, that that's uh, that's kind of how you go about it. We we'll go three more. We got one in the back, one on the side, and one up front. Andy, just following up on the Tyree question from before, how did you and Eric have to adjust the offense without him and with the new pieces? Yeah. So first of all, we're we were happy that Tyreek had a great year. He, he and he's a good kid, so he uh, had a good season there in Miami. Um, we didn't have to go back and do a whole lot uh, of changing, um, which was a that was a plus. Um, you know, Scantling can run and Watson can run, and uh, now are they as fast as Tyreek? No, there's no nobody as fast as Tyreek. So, um, but uh, they still fit the the plays still they still fit and work um, even. Uh, even though these guys are just a tick, tick slower, but um, and McCall, you know, McCall Hardman was another one when he was healthy, he could run. So uh, the plays that that required that, we were still, we still called and had success with. So yeah. Last two, James. Over here, Andy. Yep. Um, Sunday before the buses leave this hotel, what will be the routine from when you, for you and your team, from when you get up? to when you get on those buses. What will go down here at the hotel? Yeah, um, it'll be very similar to what goes on on regular road games. Uh, um, because we have the travel uh, to get to the, to the stadium and it's a little bit longer bus ride. There are things that are a little bit longer. Your pregame is longer, your halftime is longer. The commercials, the breaks are longer by 10 seconds, four of them by 20 seconds, you know, that, that whole deal. So, um, and you've got two more commercials, I think, thrown in there than you normally do. But you, um, up to that, up to the point of leaving, uh, we'll do our pregame breakfast and because we have to leave earlier than it, as if, it, you know, because of the time start. Uh, and the distance um, to get to the stadium, we won't do our normal walkthrough that we would have uh, with a night game. So, um, but that uh, we don't do it for day games, anyways. You know, so, so, so it remains relatively the same. Yeah, yeah. Last one, uh, Coach. Uh, teams, especially the AFC, have made it known that they've drafted players, signed players, changed schemes to stop the Chiefs specifically. Just kind of curious how you've adapted to that and if it's changed your coaching style. Yeah, it has just a bit. Uh, it was, there was a point where uh, you could predict what you were, you were going to see. Um, with Patrick, it's kind of gone a different direction that teams will do things that they haven't shown before. So Patrick made that adjustment. We, we made the adjustment right there with him. Uh, to give them things that we felt were good versus all uh, looks, um, as opposed to just being, a, say, a cover two specific play. Um, and, um, you know, so that took a little bit of time to work through, um, but we've done that the last couple of years now, and it's worked out, you know, it's worked out pretty good. All right, thank you. Okay, good.